What? Listen to this podcast right now! Hey. Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey Into Comics Network, and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's yes. your choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following is a Journey into Comics Network production. For a nicer guy, it couldn't happen. I'm the man of the hour, the man with the power. Diamonds are forever. He put hard times on Dusty Rhodes and his family. And what you gonna do, Andre? History beckons the macho man. Yeah. The best there is, the best there was. Austin 316 said I just swept your ass. Two words for you. Two words. Do I have everybody's attention now? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Journey into Wrestling. I'm one of your hosts, Brando. Joining me here today, as always, is my ever illustrious tag partner, Nate. How's it going, pal? You know, I think one word summarizes how it is going, and I think that word is glorious. It's glorious, dude. It's been uh, for me. It's chilly. It is. It's pretty cold in the game room. I even have a little space heater going on back here because it is cold, man. It has gotten so cold in the D for sure. Because I stepped out today, uh, overnight. Yeah, go. So as we're recording this, it's the day after Christmas, man. And I went. I yesterday. I I, yeah, I smoked some ham on the grill, and so I, I had some charcoal outside. And I left it out there all night. I'm like, oh, man, I got to go out there and just get that, you know. And I stepped outside for just 10 seconds. And that 10 seconds was enough to for me to be able to make lemonade off my nipples. It's so cold. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, that is a visual I will never lose as long as I live. Your nipples making lemonade. Um, very confusing. It is it is winter. You said that. We, were, uh, we just had Christmas. It's Christmas time. Uh, that was a couple days ago here on the network. Uh, this is episode eight, I think. Maybe? Yeah, because episode eight of Foodies just came out, and we're one behind them. So they get eight, and then we get eight, and then they get nine, and then we get... It's weird because I'm on both, so I get nine, and then I get nine. It's strange how that works. But uh, anyways, Brando, today it's the end of the year. Uh, for wrestling, this is our last show of 2017. Yeah, and we're we've chosen not to cover Clash Champions uh, because it, I don't really have much to say about it. It was there; it was kind of cool and a few things, but ultimately, I thought it was a very just forgettable show. Uh, AJ brought gender to a, another great match. But AJ, but AJ could like wrestle a broomstick and have a great match, so it's that that's no that that's, there's no surprising there. Dolph won the U.S. title for whatever reason. I don't know what kind of storyline they're doing. Something where like I he left it in the ring. It's, yeah, I don't know what they're going. I don't know where they're going with him anymore. I think this is a weird uh, thing where you know he has been working really hard, Dolph Ziggler. And I was genuinely surprised. If they're going to take the belt off of Corbin, my thought was, surefire, you're going to give it to Rude. That's just a smart play. I was not expecting the twist of that match, uh, which was probably one of the few highlights of that card aside from the tag match. Uh, the finish was pretty cool when, when Barron went to go hit the end of days and and then uh, Ziggler hit the zigzag. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was a nice setup. Uh, the thing I think you do here is, you know, Dolph might legitimately be on his way out in a few months. Who knows? You know, contracts change and things. <clears throat> this could be his one last hurrah. You know, he said, you know, give me a title and I'll prove to you my worth. And, you know, he's doing things that are different. He doesn't have an entrance really anymore. It's the whole his entrance starts and then it's like the record gets taken off and black screen and everything. So... He's trying to recreate and reinvent wrestling, and I, and I love the angle he's going at because he is using that anger that is real from all the times they've kind of screwed him over or you know fumbled the ball with his development and really making him a top star when they've had 
so many different opportunities to do so. Uh, I think that, you know, him winning the U.S. title here is like last hurrah. And if that's going to be the last hurrah, now you're going to put Bobby in a position to put himself as a top star by beating Dolph and it being a changing of the guard, you know. Do you remember when Batista went heel right before on his way out? Yeah. And he was WWE champion and his... Because you remember how Batista used to do the like, little pyro thing where he'd do like the, he'd, like, the Gatling gun. Like, da, 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 da. Uh-huh. And then he quit doing that, and then he just wanted the spotlight, so then they turned off all the lights except for a spotlight on him. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, with spotlights on him. Uh, speaking of Batista, he wants to come back. Yeah, it doesn't really surprise me. You know, it actually kind of also, spoiler alert, it gives me a... Um, a gut feeling that I have, Brando. I wanted to bring this up to you. It's This is going to be a, a couple minutes of crossover talk between the Journey into Comics and Journey into Wrestling podcast because it, it just kind of, they co-pollinate each other on this. I'm pretty sure that Drax the Destroyer is one of the characters that will not make it out of Infinity War. Uh, you know, they, quite, quite they've, possible. they've been given a list of characters they can and cannot kill. And when you look at the Drax character, just to talk journey into comics for a second here. When you look at the Drax character, he's that comic levity. He's bright. His scenes are funny. He delivers every time, you know. He is also kind of like the the class clown slash idiot, you know, because he does say such ridiculous stuff. Killing that character off in that movie is weighty. It brings a lot of emotional impact. He goes after Thanos. Especially since he... Especially since he's the one that really wants him dead, other than mo- more than some. Exactly, you know? you know he has stake in it. So, uh, with that being said, it does not surprise me that Batista wants to come back because his his movie career can take a little bit of a break. He's probably done doing that. He's done, done a couple huge blockbusters now. Three, when you think about it. Well, see, and now like they're done with Infinity War, or Avengers Four, so he may not even die in the third Avengers movie. He may die in the near the end of the fourth, or you know. Like everything's wrapped up for the most part. Now that's not saying that he's going to come back soon. That's just saying that he's not. Uh, I saw an interview with him where he said he's not interested in coming back in a manner of a one-off or an offshoot, just a cheap pop. He goes, "I want to come back and I want to hit the road. I want to do house shows. You know, I want to do the TV. I want to do everything. I want to be a part of it." And so he goes, "If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way." And I, um, he said on his last run. He's like he's like it wasn't even until like mania to where he even felt like he got like the ring rust off and he got back into the groove of things because it takes a little bit when you're on the road and you're traveling to get you know to get those shoes back on and of course he did mania and I think he might have did like two more pay per views after that and then he was gone like April and May and then he went back off and then that's around the time that he did uh, uh he, that he was getting ready to start press for for Guardians one right yep. and uh, so. His plan was always to like leave by the summer, but that he didn't get what he got promised, and I feel like that is don't ever promise that stuff to a returning guy. Yeah, I mean, is it very well impossible if he comes back for, let's say, not even this year? Let him take the rest of the year off. Let him get back into shape. Let him like if he's not going to do any more Avengers movies, he doesn't have that that burden to where he's got to make sure that his schedule's clear. He's going to get movie offers. Uh, he can still go do those but while he's getting in shape. But let him just wait and then come back and have a good year-long run to finish off the Batista character and let him ride off into the sunset. Because I guess early rumors were that he was might be rumored for the Hall of Fame this year. Wow. Oh. Uh, which I guess now are now back on hold because he's talking about he wants to have another run. And they're like, well, let's hold off on the, on the Hall of Fame until you're kind of finished, you know. Yeah, uh, and of course for them they're like, well, let's put him in the Hall of Fame, and then they've got this big Marvel movie coming out in two months, and it's like we just inducted Drax the Destroyer into our Hall of Fame. You get some crossover, you know? Yeah. And but but now I've heard that the headliner for this year is going to be. Did we talk about uh, about the about Hall of Fame inductees on the last episode? Uh, I feel like we talked about the rumored, and one of was Goldberg one of the rumors. Goldberg, Bam Bam Bigelow, Ivory, and the Dudley Boys. Yep, those think, are, are what we has, talked about, and that makes sense. I mean, it makes a, you have your you have your deceased member. That's Bam Bam. You have your female. There's Ivory. 
your tag team covered. There's your big. You might have room for a couple more. You know. Who do you do for uh, uh, your celeb? Oh, they. I remember who they had. Oh no. <sighs> oh no. Man. Man, this is bad. Oh shit! This is so bad. You can't even. It say doesn't. It. Because it doesn't even make any goddamn sense. Like, it, it makes less sense than Schwarzenegger, all right? Okay. Yeah, or, uh, you know, it's like Schwarzenegger, what, he, he appeared on the show twice? Yeah, ever. And then they Okay, ever, him. ever, in the history of ever. Yeah. So, like, when I'm thinking of who, sh- who should I induct into the Hall of Fame, uh, right off the bat, dude, if you say celebrity wing a Hall of Fame, I'm talking I would induct Mike Tyson. Yes. For sure. I would induct... Flo, Floyd Mayweather, guys that have actually gotten in the ring, guys that have done stuff. I would even, I would even induct the Kevin Federline wow. over this dude, and that's because he got in the ring and he did stuff. No, they're wanting to do Kid Rock. Oh, what? What? Why? What in the world is going on? And he's a cowboy, baby. That's one of those, you hear that, and, like, it just hurts my head. It literally hurts my whole entire dome that you just said that that is a possibility for a Hall of It's awful. It's awful. What has he done? You know, Performed a couple times? Big fucking whoop. He hasn't even well, appeared like, ringside. Dude, he, he performed at WrestleMania 25, I think it was, and wouldn't even let them use the, the footage for the Blu-ray. Well, I mean, because it was a rights issue thing. Is it stupid? That is very. They won't do it now, but I would induct Fred Durst over this dude. Holy shit! Damn. All right, that's a strong I mean, statement. It, and what did Fred Durst do? He was on that ground. He's flipping people off, and now they won't let him back in the building. <laughs> like, oh no, we're PG now, Fred. He's like, he don't care. Fuck you, Vince. <laughs> I don't care. But. Man, there's just there's a lot more celebs that I would induct before I would induct Bob Barker before I would induct Kid Rock. All right, shit. I would induct the Muppets before I would in, like, I, and, I, and I'm just going through all these like I would induct the motherfuckers Aretha from Franklin? Entourage. Yes, Ariba McIntyre. Ariba McIntyre, <laughs> absolutely. You know Tito Santana's sister. Um, man, flying jalapeno. You know, damn. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm so off track now to thinking about this possible Hall of Fame. I'm just like, I don't even know where to go. Uh, but today, Brando, we had talked about it. We've got some end-of-the-year awards we're going to do. We did this last year before we were officially seasonal, I think, right? Is that how that happened? What's that? I'm sorry. I was looking at I was looking at her notes. Well, like I, I, I lost track of what you said. Oh, it's okay. I was just saying, like, uh, we did this last year, the same thing, right? It was about this time. Yes, last yes. Year, end of the yes, year. we did. Um, and then after Mania, my enthusiasm for wrestling kind of dwindled a little after Mania, and so I decided I want to kind of take a break from the show because I don't want to do a show that I'm not excited about. And I love wrestling. I'm very passionate about wrestling, but I don't ever, and I don't care if it's comics. Wrestling, games, I don't ever want to do a show where I'm not giving my all and I'm just phoning it in. That's not fun. That's not fun for me, and I can't imagine that would be fun to listen to. So, yeah, we took a break, and then when we launched the network, I was trying to think of a way, like, okay, well, we need to bring the show back. And uh, I'm like, well, let's go ahead and make it maybe seasonal. That way, you know, we already have, I mean, I, I, I host two other shows. You host three other shows. And so... It's not that I don't want to do wrestling all the time. It's just like, well, you know, let's let's give this a break every once in a while because wrestling isn't always that interesting to talk about. But we did do the awards last year, and uh, this year we, um, I think we have a lot of the same categories. Uh, we we might have like brought it down just a, just just a few, but. Uh, we are going to tackle these in a certain order. Like, there's a couple of them. I, a couple of them that I want to wait until we get to the last. But let's go ahead and start this year with the most shocking moment. Oh man, 
<clears throat> the most shocking moment in wrestling. Now, a lot of these nominees guys are going to be WWE based. I don't watch a lot of outside stuff. I see it, but I don't watch it. There's a difference. Nate follows more, and I uh, how we did this is that we each I gave him two of my picks, and I gave him the chance to pick whatever he wanted to pick, and it just kind of leveled out this year to where there wasn't a whole lot of uh, uh, Ring of Honor, New Japan, or uh, or uh, Impact Wrestling, that show, yeah. Um, whatever that is now. Well, um, and the thing, Brando, too, is that uh, I'm just getting into, like, I'm probably only like four or five months at this <clears> point <throat> into watching the, more of the indie stuff and, and following it a little more closely. So I'm still learning that whole thing and how, you know, listen, uh, when you level up the... Uh, the talent pool, if you will, and redefine what a great match is. It's like, you know, um, when Kenny Omega and Okada are having 6.25 star matches or whatever, uh, you, can you consider any match that, like, uh, you know, I don't know, some mid-card wrestler on WWE, like, it's they, they aren't even on the same scale at that point. So I'm, like, learning what it is to to see indie wrestling as a new art form. And how they take it. It's to, different. It is very different, and they and they definitely pull back the the kind of overly dramatized storylines. It's a lot more in the just like having a badass wrestling match. Marty Skrull and uh, Jay Lethal had a match at Final Battle. It was fucking amazing. It did not make my list, but it could very well could have because it was just like they did work. <laughs> Jay Lethal. I love Jay Lethal. He's great. He did the classic woo off with Ric Flair that could never forget. One of the best TNA Ooh. moments ever. Uh, so <laughs> to see him in the ring, and he is kind of a little bit more serious now, you know, just like being a uh, honing that character and just having that drive or whatever up against a dude from the Bullet Club. They just put on a hell of a performance. It was really great. Uh, but to move back away from the tangents, talking about shocking moments this year. Go ahead, Brando. Sorry, don't don't mean to interject. I just wanted to say how we're going to do this is that we have like three or four nominees in each category. And how we're going to do this is that I don't know which one Nate's going to pick and he doesn't know which one I have picked. And if they're the same, it wins. You know, uh, if we're if we are unanimous on whoever we think that 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 they should go to, it's going to win. However, if he picks one and I pick a different one. Then we're going to go to our good old trusty random name picker that we utilize for our random yes. highlight segment. And that is going to choose the winner out of these two because literally, even though he and I might not agree on it, I mean, it's out of our hands at that point because any, anything that is here is pretty much kind of like they, they kind of belong on this award. You know, that they, they, they do belong to be here. So let's talk about the first one we have here, and that is Jinder Mahal wins the WWE title. Now, I did not see this coming at all. Uh. A little bit I did because there was like the rumblings and the rumors that they were going to try to break into India a little bit more and expand that market. So I had heard like it could happen. I just really, like you said, was not expecting it to actually happen. You know, he, I mean, just like what, a little a little over a month before he won the title, he like broke Finn Balor's jaw or something in a botched spot on Raw. <laughs> like, yeah, he's in like an early match on the card so he was just like kind of a, a low level mid event guy he was a part of three man band which is weird to think of and such uh, and then like for him now to be in this quote unquote upper echelon and have held he broke Ric Flair's title one of Ric Flair's title reigns I do believe uh, with his title reign for length length yes length. I mean well I mean Ric Flair I mean he had 16 of them some of them weren't the most longest to begin with that's true but but they he, he kind of had like what I call like a like like what I liken back to kind of like a JBL run where this dude kind of comes out of not nowhere but he's on the show and he's there and, and he gets a shot and then he wins and then he goes on to carry it for a while and they and they let him run with it and he's really in my opinion evolved to another level of anywhere near like nowhere near that I ever thought he would and, and no offense to him but. He really ascended, and uh, he, you know he gave it a good run. And I, uh, I don't just dis I don't disagree with them taking the the belt off of him, but I do disagree with how they did it. Like when they already started the build up to him and Lesnar, and he called it out, 
And all of a sudden, AJ's like, mine. And then he goes off because AJ's a better match for Lesnar. Uh, I wish they would have found a better way to do it because it just doesn't make any damn sense. And then they go over to India, cancel all the shows but one, and he wrestles Triple H. And and And, and then he's the heel in the match, and then he loses. Like, the fans are more for Triple H than they were for him. It was very bizarre. So, uh, but it was a shocker. It was it, it literally, like, you know, came out of nowhere, just like an RKO or, or a diamond cutter. Ooh, I like what you did here. Next one on the list, the Hardys return. Uh, I want to I want to kind of say one thing about this shocking moment because there had been teasings, <clears throat> possibility, you know, they might return. They were booked in the area that WrestleMania was happening in. There's all this, you know, personal conjecture of what people want to see happen. Well, they were defending the Ring of Honor tag titles that Saturday night mm-hmm. in, a, in a ladder match. Yeah, uh, crazy. Just and so doing it like they do, going full bore as the Hardys do, you know. And, and I want to say in that month they had the ta- the TNA tag titles, ROH tag Ring of Honor tag titles, and then they returned at WrestleMania the next night. And won the Raw tag team titles in a ladder match, and they like they were a, a surprise team announcement, and it was cool because yes, the they they were we we'd all heard the rumors that oh they're probably going to be coming in, and the conjecture was the night after Mania, yeah, and then and then it was like yeah maybe it'll be then maybe it'll be shortly after maybe they'll let it go a little bit maybe they'll let, like let them rest up before they actually get back on the road, and no they went and they dropped the Ring of Honor tag titles on Saturday night, we went back to the room. Rested up that night, got up the next day, hung out, and like long enough to just go straight to the venue. That they, they weren't at the wrestling venue, like or at because they were at the Orange Bowl, uh, for for Mania this past yeah. year. They got there like and didn't like they weren't hanging around backstage hours before the show. They just they showed up, in, either in their gear, or they got in their gear, and they walked out. Yeah, they kept them like hidden in a trailer or something, right? It was something like that, but it it was an awesome because they definitely got the pop of the night, um, and then of course the uh, Matt still had like the like the broken streak in his hair, and he was doing the kind of the mannerisms of broken, and he had like all those fans doing the delete chants. Oh man, it was amazing! It was they were so over in that moment. It was incredible. One thing I will remember about WrestleMania, you know Sarah pretty well, and uh, when we were watching WrestleMania this year. Uh, you know, when she reacted and had like almost a little bit of tears in her eyes seeing the Hardys come back, it was just like, God, this is an amazing moment in life. You know, you don't get that often, but the Hardys are just a, a phenomenal team that have definitely transcended generations now and continuously evolved and improved their characters. I mean, you got to think they were holding doors at like the 1994, 1995 Royal Rumble, and then here they are now, like legend, literally, Brando, legendary tag team, and they got one of the most beautiful, like you want to talk a WrestleMania moment? And the Hardys have had a fuck ton of WrestleMania moments, but that's their moment, bro. That defines them. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, well, for them to come back to to the... major league company after however many years and get the reaction that they got. What was it like seven years? It's close to. Yeah. Cause I want to say they wrestled each other at WrestleMania 25. Yeah. Hardy versus Hardy. And then it was shortly after that, that, that they went off and took off because Jeff went first and had his run at TNA. And then Matt, they both kind of had their own little struggles. You know, Jeff had that worst match in wrestling history, oh, modern Jesus history. Anyway, he was staying. staying. And then Matt was going through his problems too. Like he was going through his, he was he was trying to find himself and going going through, going through some issues. And things that come uh, come out brighter on the other side. Uh, speaking of last night, uh, Woke and Matt uh, kind of attacked Bray Wyatt on Monday Night Raw. That was awesome. Bray came out in Chicago on Christmas, uh, you know, with the lights. As soon as the lights hit in the arena. Bro- broke it well woken matt hardy was out there to attack him and then have a really hila- like really bizarre slash hilarious promo yeah you know he's so i can't wait for okay. jeff to come back into this and oh man it's this thing is gonna this is a slow burn feud that bray wyatt desperately needed and perfectly fits with what matt can do 
Mm-hmm. Like this is absolutely, and this is you know it's crazy that had been teased on Twitter back when uh, Matt was still in the TNA and mm-hmm. Bray was in the WWE. E. You know, uh, and Mister McMahon. Yes, um, and and the, and the Vince McMahon. And you know, uh, Bray said, "You know where to find us." Well, they sure as shit did find him, and here it is. You know, so yeah, the Hardys return. Badass moment, absolutely. Uh, you want the next one, or should I take the next one? Or, well, this is one of your picks, but this is Joe takes Lesnar to the limit. Now, uh, this was that great balls of fire. Yeah, one of the worst pay per view names ever picked for any pay per view in the history of ever. Actually, still a pay per view name. They they still decided to use it for that one event. <laughs> like, so hold on it. Is it on the is it on the, is it on the calendar for next year? No, but I'm just saying they didn't retroactively go back and edit it to be something totally different. Do you remember when it was Great American Bash for like four years, and then they changed it to just the Bash? The Bash, yes, I. So what if this it. one is going to just be the Balls, <laughs> <laughs> or Great Balls, or Great Fire? <laughs> the event is just called WWE of Fire. <laughs> People would be like, "What the shit?" They'd still totally buy in, though. <laughs> they could name their pay per view uh, horse shit, and people would still get behind it. You know, dude. A lot of people were upset about this match, and I thought it was a pretty darn good match. It, it it's exactly kind of what I wanted it to be. Just a rough and tough two guys in there going, you know, going fisticuffs, going at it. Uh, I, I think some people thought it was going to be a little bit more over the top. But it wasn't. It was like this this ground and pound kind of fight it, with the suplexes and everything. And a lot of people were upset that Lesnar defeated Joe with just one F5. And here's the thing, though. They've done that every time. In every Because that was Lesnar's first match after, after, uh, after Goldberg. And didn't he beat Goldberg with just one F5? Yep. So they're building it up to where that move is going to be the end. So that way, when when Roman kicks out of it, <gasps> no one's kicked out of the F five in about a year and a half. Oh my god, I can't believe! That's why they're doing it, guys. It beat Joe. It beat Braun. It beat so many people. It beat AJ. It beat Goldberg. It's going to beat Kane or whatever. Braun, it, it, it's going to ends up being Kane to take the dude, pin there because that way you protect Braun. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's they're doing it for a reason. I thought it was a damn good match, and I. There, there is a part of me that wanted to see the unpredictable. I wanted, I want to see Joe win that big title in WWE. I, I do. I'm a big fan of Joe. Big, I've got my, 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 my autographed picture with Joe and AJ Styles from TNA 2008. I was there. Still, uh, still, yeah, dude. Uh, like we didn't even plan on seeing each other there, and we were there. Um, but I got that. Uh, like I still got that up. I'm a, been a huge fan of Joe since Spring of Honor. I want to see him get his just. I mean, because AJ has come in, and he is he, now he's had two world titles under his belt. Joe still has hasn't had any other than the other than the NXT title, and honestly, if they're going to have Roman feud with Joe, it makes total sense to me if if they want Roman to go up against Brock Lesnar, give the belt to Joe, let him have the IC belt, and let him run with that for a little bit until it's time, and then either you can have like whatever. I just think Joe needs to be on that top tier, and he kind of he's been he's been kind of dancing along the edge. He's had his shots, you know. It's it's not like they're just pushing him down to the mid card to do nothing. They're they are doing stuff with Joe, and he's in a feud right now with the top guy who they feel is the top guy on the entire and the entire company. So that is a good place to be. It's just that you know they're 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 universal champ. He's not around, and I mean so there you go. I mean it. You you do have to rely on on Roman Reigns and and these guys when your guy's not around. So. Anyway, the last one, uh, do you want to go ahead and take this one, Nate? Yeah, so I just added this one to the list because it was a moment that I oh, genuinely I, wasn't. I agree. I, like, I wasn't expecting it at all, you know. Uh, this was at <laughs> Hell in a Cell pay-per-view last month, I think it was, or a couple weeks ago at this point. I think it was in October. It wasn't. It, oh, yeah, it was. It was it, yeah, it's been a little bit. So it was, because it's been, yeah, it's been a few months. It was Sammy versus Shane. God damn it. Kevin Owens versus Shane. Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. 
and it was a great match. We saw what looked like was going to be Shane doing the same move he did to Taker at WrestleMania 32, the elbow drop off the top of the cell. He went for it, and I was sure as shit, like, oh, this is the end of the match. Shane's got this. But then, like, at the first replay, I was like, wow, they just had KO roll out of the way. That's kind of crazy, like, actually brilliant. And then it wasn't until the second camera angle showing Sammy, like, jump out and pull him that I was like, holy shit, I actually wasn't expecting this turn. Sammy, and it's it was like the... The most well-timed turn. Sammy had been turning his wheels. He was like the most lovable loser on the roster. Doing everything he can to get over and being over and then still just not getting any opportunities. So they said, here, we're going to pair you up with your buddy KO. You guys had great matches together, but now you can have a great partnership together and really create an interesting story. And that's what they've done with this. So this is one of those moments, while it's small, I feel like it's going to have a long-term payoff. And we'll be talking about this for a long time. Hell yeah. And so now we have the four. Yes, sir. So now we got to pick, Nate. My pick? Sure. Is gender is gender wins the title. What is yours? My pick was the Hardy's return. Hardy's return. So now it's down to between those two. So we're going to go to our trusty random name picker. Ooh, I can't wait to see and- what went cuz these are both great moments. No one loses in this pick right now. We both win because... Okay. Okay, go. Sure, tell me. Here we are, dude. Um, I wrote down gender and I wrote down Hardys. Now, how this works, it's on miniwebtool.com slash random name picker. So, I mean, we're, the, I mean, this is legit. We don't know this. Is how we pick our random highlights. It's going to pick one of these two, Nate. Are you ready? Do it, bro. And the winner for the most shocking moment of the year is the return of the Hardys. Wow. Okay. Uh, I would have. I mean, this is that's cool. It was a, like I said, a very great moment. I think I I kind of elaborated on why I loved it so much. It just hit a lot of different chords. Definitely a defining moment for their careers. It's a well deserved award from our tiny little podcast to the giant Hardys. Giant Hardys. So we're just going to go and segue right into the best debut slash return. And how this works, guys, is that um, you you can either we either consider debut to NXT or debut to main roster because they're you know, when you're getting called up, it is sort of a uh, kind of a re debut because not everybody follows NXT. So not everybody is going to be overly familiar with the NXT guys. But then we are. We, uh, I decided to bundle in return as well because we had a couple of big returns. And it was very interesting that some of the bigger returns did not get nominated here this year. Yeah, I don't know what big returns I missed, but oops. Turd Angle. Oh, shit. Shield. Oh, shit. So those... Well, now that's going to change everything, Brando, because now I'm thinking about those. Hmm. Well, number one for debut, we're looking at Shinsuke Nakamura's debut on the main roster. Of course, he went to SmackDown. Had that great, awesome segment with the dude playing the violin. Yeah. Oh, man. I I love Shinsuke's entrance anyway, but um, I'm so awesome. Shinsuke's done a lot of – he's had a lot of great matches over there on SmackDown. He's really starting to get over with the main crowd. Uh, and it's awesome because he's a Japanese star. And what I mean by that is it's very difficult for a lot, a lot of times for a lot of, like, foreign stars to get over in American soil. And I really don't understand why if it's just, like – a, a counterculture to them or whatever they 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 like to cheer and stick with what they know but because there's not a whole lot of big japanese stars that have come over other than muda uh that have really caught on on the mainstream crowd and even now it's like man fans now are a lot of them won't know even know who muda was you know and it's, if you're talking about big time stars shinsuke is definitely crossing over because another big time star that you had was Kenta or 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 Hideo Itami, he just, and he hasn't caught on nearly as well as Shinsuke. And, and I really think for Shinsuke, it's, it's it's a lot of his persona. It's it's how he carries himself. It's different, and he he really does have a big character ab- about him. But I'm really happy for Shinsuke, and and I hope and I hope that the moon is like like he, that like like he can just shoot for that, and he can be as go as far and as high as he ever wants to go in the company. 
I would love to see uh, Shinsuke, and you're going to maybe be shocked to hear me say this. I would love to see Shinsuke uh, win the WWE title and then hold it longer than Punk did. If someone's going to outlast that reign of the modern era, Punk's title of 434 days, I think it was. Uh, you know, I feel like there are two people that could do it. AJ's one of them. How much longer is he going to be around, though? Do you want him to have the weight of having to hold that belt for so long? There's a new up-and-comer. Who would it be on that side of the table? I'm going Shinsuke. Uh, you're right, he is catching on. Uh, and his debut was awesome. Uh, another debut that was awesome was Bobby Roode coming in. It's also a SmackDown debut. Uh, he Did he debut against Dolph? Did they have that match? Uh, I think he interrupted Dolph first, didn't he? That's right. Yes, he did interrupt Dolph. Uh, and then they had the whole. They've had that kind of like still long withstanding feud. We talked about it earlier. Yeah. Dolph won in the triple threat match against Bobby and Baron Corbin. Uh, did they lose faith in Baron? Are they? Did they jump ship on him? Is that what that title no. loss signifies? No, I. I just think they were trying to keep it unpredictable, and I think they were trying to, uh, like, everyone was thinking that Dolph was there to take the fall. That way, either, either Baron wouldn't get hurt or. Or Rude wouldn't get hurt. Uh, and I think that they kind of felt like, well, this is like, everyone's expect, nobody expects Dolph to win this, so let's let it happen. So let's have him win it and see what happens. Yeah, I think he's going to make gold out of it. I hope so. Uh, up next is the Hardys, and we talked about that. The, that Of course, that won the shocker, the most shocking moment for, for Journey to Wrestling was their return at WrestleMania, and we've already kind of discussed that. The last up here was the, is, is the most recent, and that was the return of Kane. When Kane came back and he leveled Braun Strowman, if I remember correctly. Yeah, isn't he running for governor or something? Mayor? He's running for mayor of, of uh, Knox, Knoxville, Tennessee? Knoxville? Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, It's somewhere down there. Well, he, but he is running for mayor, and of course now he's in the... Uh, he's in the Universal Title match against Lesnar, Strowman, Kane, and Lesnar. Um, a lot of people are like harping on, on on him to just retire. He's not at running at at a, at a level that he, that he used to. Same thing that people are saying about saying about Big Show. I have nothing but respect for Kane. Same. I feel like I feel like he, if he's there and they want to put him in this match, he deserves it because he he has been around for so long and he's. He's always performed at like at like a top tier, and he's always like over delivered as a character, as a performer. Is he going to win? No, but you know what? Let's get in there and let's and let's have some fun. So we got the four. We have we had the Hardys. We had Shinsuke, Bobby, and Kane. My vote's going for Shinsuke uh, for for debut. I feel like he's done a lot, and. Um, We'll go ahead and put it on him because it's Shinsuke all the way. All right, man. Uh, it is unanimous here. I was kind of thinking that we were going to have another showdown with because you can argue that like the best return would definitely be the Hardys because it has led us to this point of of wokenness. Truth. So truth. But I but just uh, I like again, the debut of the young blood. You know, I like seeing them get in there and finally have their shot. Same, and then of course we had the surprising return to the ring from Kurt Angle, and then the the Shield, and of course now that reunion has been uh, curbed a little bit due to uh, Dean Ambrose's injury, out for up to nine months. Uh, yeah, legit injured. That's not cool. Written off TV. Give the spot to Jason Jordan. Do you see him fighting to be a member of the Shield, and them still saying no, 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 and him fighting to be the Shield, and then no, 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 and then finally he'll like. Join the Shield. Dean Ambrose returns, kicks him, hits him with the with the finisher, and that's it. Like dirty he, deeds. you know, dirty deeds. And then <laughs> you know, he never was officially in the Shield. It's this big like trying to lead up to see if he's got what it takes. You know, uh, a whole nine year program or nine year. <laughs> Holy shit! That's <laughs> long. His whole entire program. Career, he was trying to get in the Shield. <laughs> they broke up four times and reunited six times. He was still trying to get in, and he couldn't do it. <laughs> he finally got their approval, and they held their hands out for him, and he put his hands in, and then you hear. Nah, 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 nah. 
Here comes Dean nine years later, <laughs> hobbling on a crutch. <laughs> Dirty deeds and boom. And the and and Seth and Roman are looking at each other like, what? And then he puts his fist there. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, we're back. he never really got it. <laughs> Except for it's old man Ambrose now. You know, he's gray and balding. Look, and Roman Reigns is a 34-time WWE world champion. He's still not over. <laughs> <laughs> he still gets booed at everything. It's uh, uh, funny to me. Um, so the next up, we have Most Improved. And the first nominee is Braun Strowman. God, you could almost single-handedly just hand that to him. I said this a couple weeks ago on this show. He debuted in the Wyatt family, and I could give two shits about Braun Strowman. He was just this the black sheep is how they, they introduced him. And then he drafted to Raw. They split up the uh, the Wyatt family in the, in the draft or whatever. And then he just took off. And the stuff between him and Roman this past year... Holy hot shit, Batman. Like, inc- I'm not done with you. God, he flipped over an ambulance and the fucking. They they had an ambulance match at. Uh, I can't remember what the pay per view was that they had that ambulance match. Was that at Great Balls? Was it an ambulance at Great Balls or was it just a regular match at Great Balls? I th- no, I want to say that was the match. It was. Uh, because it was at WWE The Balls that they had. Uh, <laughs> Football. That they had the ambulance match because then Roman, he ended up like backing the ambulance up really fast into this tra- tractor trailer, and they had this big long segment trying to get Strowman out of the ambulance. And then when he got out of the ambulance, he just stumbled off. Yeah, it, it, they've just made Braun literally. I mean, his tag is a monster among men. They have done that. He is the monster of that locker room. He has. God, the oh, we can't even forget Braun Strowman, Big Show, collapsing ring, amazing yeah. moment. Braun Strowman, Kane, choke slam through the ring or body power slam through the ring. Um, didn't he? I thought he choke slammed him through the ring, but then you also had uh, Braun and Big Show. He he threw Big Show through the cage. Yes. Oh my God, that was ridiculous. The one side of the cage just broke, and he was just. And that's a hard bump for a 460-pound big show to take. And then you had King Kong show, because he looks like King Kong Bundy with no hair, damn it. He does, yeah. It looks so weird. But, yeah, Strowman, uh, definitely a high contender for this category for me as well. Uh, Also, here is Jinder Mahal. We already talked about how much he's improved from uh, from going all the way back to the three-man band era and being that character and then leaving and then coming back kind of being uh, not really doing a whole lot, but then all of a sudden thrusted in, in this position. And now he's one of the you know, top heels on SmackDown. And whoever would have thought that, dude? I think he's improved in ring and on the mic uh, a lot. Uh, I think that uh, another thing about gender is he didn't come back to much fanfare. It's not like his return mm-hmm. was heralded, oh, soon returning. Jinder Mahal, everyone's so excited that there's this antis. They didn't do that. He just like showed up mid card, if that, you know. Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm going back and jacked, and it looks like I've been using. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be shitty to him, but he really should see a dermatologist if he's not doing steroids because it's it's bad, bro. It's like I think about him taking bumps, and I just go, oh, oh, the mat is gross. Oh, you know, like it's bad. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, they're just. It's like it, it, it's almost as gross as having all those ass pimples on Rikishi's butt pop all over your face. Or Gene Snitsky. Oh, it's God. not my fault. And and then like, didn't he like dye his teeth brown for that one run? Oh yeah, they didn't tell him to, and he totally chose to. He just kept like browning his teeth. What the just f- to be nastier and nastier. Yeah, um, but back to the most improved uh, female contender on the list. Got to talk about yeah. her. Uh, completely not nasty. In fact, kind of hot. Uh, Alexa Bliss. Kind of kind of hot. She's hot. Damn. Dude, she hot as hell. Sorry um, to be like that, but like for real, folks. I'll tell you what, dude. I am totally... Uh, I, I am never complaining when she's on TV. Uh, I feel like she's a good worker. I feel like she she's really good on the mic, dude. She's, ever since she got... Like when she got ca- called up to the main roster, I thought maybe it was a little too soon. But she is 
completely turned me around. She um oh well, that almost sounded dirty. I was just saying, but she I feel what you're saying. Uh, she, but like she really did though. I mean, she when she rose up to being the SmackDown Women's Champion, and then she was the she defended that at Mania, and now she's like on top on Raw. It's a spot that she deserves to be in, without a doubt. Dude, she won the Women's SmackDown title and the Raw SmackDown title in a short amount of time. It's incredible. I mean, she did it before Charlotte did it. You know, Charlotte's mm-hmm. the only other one on the roster that's held them both, I think, at this point. I think so, yeah. So that's an incredible accomplishment. And Alexa Bliss, you know, coming up from NXT, she was doing good work and stuff. I didn't really have a lot of confidence that she would do well on the main roster. And then, man, she proved me right the fuck wrong. And I, I couldn't be more happy. I think she's done great this past year, for sure. Lastly is Sami Zayn. Of course, we're going to be talking about the big heel turn and the difference in character for Sami. And, and, and it it really has a uh, it's, it's showing him more character than he's really shown since he's been there. And so uh, him with Owens, uh, them with the whole yep yep movement, has been, uh, that's been really entertaining for me. Uh, I cannot wait to see more of this, and I really do hope our little thing comes true where where Owens kind of uses him to, to get back in that title picture and Owens wins the WWE title and there's Sammy. He's happy for his buddy, but now because of that, he's not going to mania, but, um, Sammy Zayn, the most improved. When you think about a year ago, as you said, he was just kind of spinning his tires. He was just sort of this lovable loser and they were kind of playing that role with him. He wasn't getting a whole, like any wins. And then, and then, you know, he ends up t- tagging up with his old partner. And I felt like the storyline worked and i love the i love the promo that they did with him saying you know kevin you were right you know after after all i after at the after everything you were right and i and i really enjoyed that that aspect of uh, like of his turn to help explain it yeah uh sammy you know like i said he was lovable loser and now he's got some weight and there's a lot of possibilities with his character Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to say most improved. I'm going to give it to Braun. I think I, I really genuinely do believe he is very deserving of that title, most improved. He is leaps and bounds where he was a year ago. I agree. Uh, Ward goes to Braun Strowman. Oh, well, that was easy. Two unanimouses <laughs> in a row, Brando. That's great. News. I know. We might be a bit divided here, though. Uh-oh. The next one we're going to do is is match of the year. I, and we have, we we have a lot of great matches this year, and you know, and even a lot of great matches that were nominated. I nominated two of these. You nominated the last two. I'm so I'm going to talk about the first two and tell you why I nominated them. Sure, and I'm going to preface that with saying I've watched three of the four matches today. All right, I have not. <laughs> I'm just saying they're really fresh for me. So, okay. So first match on the docket for me. AJ Styles versus John Cena from the Royal Rumble. Holy shit. AJ comes in as heel. AJ comes in as heel champion. And he's coming off of that push that he got from beating Cena at SummerSlam. And what was last year's? I want to say that was that the winner of the match of the year last year? Yes, for us? I think so. If it wasn't, I know it was definitely nominated because I championed that match. Yep. That match is one of the best matches ever, and especially you know. But you know, any match involving Cena. Cena's not a bad worker by any means, but and again, AJ makes anybody and everybody look great. Same thing here, except now it's for the title. Now you have the whole Cena tying flares thing. Now you have you know AJ is now on top because he's claim his claim to fame is that he's taken Cena's spot. I beat Cena. I'm his spot now. I'm the guy to beat. And Cena's like, I still got it. And Styles is like, prove it. So now it's the proving ground for both of these guys. And it was an amazing knockout, drag out match. And and some people might not think so, but I think it lived up to their first match uh, that they had. And, and even that was their second match, but it was the first one that didn't have any sort of like questionable ending or anything like that. It was the straight up one on one contest. And Cena gets the win here and wins his 16th world title, and then you know carries on to lose it at the Elimination Chamber. I think it was when he when he ended up losing in there. But uh, 
Definitely um, one of my matches of the year, Nate. This match is the first one I watched this morning, actually, uh, and it was great. There are a lot of amazing moments. They work so well off each other. Some just <laughs> different great moments within that match. Uh, one thing to mention, you were talking about AJ. He, at this point in the his career in WWE, is being he would like to be announced as the face that runs the place. He took that from Cena. It's the whole, you know, taking the gimmick from the guy you just beat. And it was really a beautifully told story. John gets the win here. Uh, ties Flair for the most titles, which really argue Flair has 19, maybe 20. But according to the WWE history books, there's only 16 of them. So Cena's right there. And it's uh, it's crazy that this guy who I latched on to in 2002 or 2003 when he was coming up, uh, actually is this legendary dude now uh, who at one point I really didn't like or respect because they just gave it to him too often, I thought. Uh, but in the in the quote-unquote twilight of John Cena's career, this match was... They tore the house down, bro. They left Absolutely. nothing to be desired in that match. They put on a, a, a near-perfect show. You know, when, 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 when Cena hit that, that ending, that double... Um, AA. Yeah. You know, he hit it and then he rolled right through with it and hit, hit it, it again. again. Oh, dude, yeah, that was great. Up next for me is the War Games match from NXT War Games. This is relatively recent. I want to say it was November that that, that this was. Yes, sir. And right uh, the reason, you know, and there's a lot of matches that I could have chosen. I, there's a lot of matches that were that I was thinking about that were just awesome matches. You know, uh, throughout the year, and I mentioned it before we came on air. You have the. Uh, uh, the match with uh, uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne from NXT, I want to say Chicago. Yep. Um, you, you you could even put the Velveteen Dream and Aleister Black from this same show up there. The, that match is way better than what I ever thought it was going to be. I'm like, holy crap, it's a great match. And then, of course, uh, another match I thought of was AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. One of Brock Lesnar's best matches in probably a year and a half or two. And we'll just, uh, again... Hats off to AJ. He could wrestle anybody, anything, and it's going to be a four star match, I guarantee you. I heard that there's a uh, a rumored return happening for 34, and it's going to be AJ Styles versus Moppy. Moppy. <laughs> <laughs> With Perry Saturn You're welcome. as valet. You know. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, the reason why I chose War Games, though was because I was a little skeptical coming into this. Um, WWE has never ran. They had never ran a War Games. And this was a formula that I was very familiar with from the uh, Jim Crockett and in WCW days with the double ring, with the double cage. And they made some changes to it. They did, it didn't have a top on it. And they made changes to it by making it more of a triple threat than uh, starting off a one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, the traditional War Games, it's two teams of five. And this was like... Three teams of three, so it, it so it was, it was a bit different. But I just loved how it was very much like a controlled chaos, and it was it was very on the edge of your seat. At, like at times, they still told a great story, of, and, and getting so many spots in on this match. And you know, in today's wrestling, it's very difficult to have high spots and not have it be a match filled with high spots. Or to tell a great story, and it's like, all right, we're going to have a high spot here. But what high spots haven't there already been? How can we come up with something new and unique? Uh, you know, you know, what was a high spot in 85? Today is a DDT. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It, so it's like, it's very difficult. Very difficult. It's <laughs> great. Holy shit. Oh, that's perfect because DDT is not at all a high spot whatsoever. It's like the no, lowest of but low back spots. In, but like back in the day, that was it. You're not kicking out of a fucking DDT. I guess that's true. And then nowadays, you know, like everybody and their brother has a different very like Rey Mysterio has like this you know, spin around, jump on off the top rope, grab you, head to, head to the mat. Oh my god, that's the end. One, two, kick out. Oh, 37th close near fall. You know, it's very difficult nowadays uh, to find that mix. And I thought this match did a great job of that. And I, and I felt like when I was thinking of if I'm going to nominate two matches for the year, 
uh, when my brain instantly went to the Cena uh, Styles match from the beginning of the year, even though we've had a lot of great matches since then. And I'm like, all right, I did that, and I could easily pick. You know, I was thinking Dunn and Bate, but I'm like, that's a different. You know, that's similar but different. But I'm like, but if I'm gonna pick something completely different, I'm like, it's gotta be War Games because I, I was I thoroughly enjoyed that match. It was a great match. There were some amazing spots. Not Killian Dane, but Alexander. I can't think of his last name. He's the other guy, the big guy in Sanity. He took that crazy bump through the tables and smashed Mm -hmm. his head. And you had uh, Adam Cole off the top of the cages. There were so many different great moments here. I love the bumps that are taken in between the rings because they put the diamond plate grating uh, There's a moment where Adam Cole was sitting between the two rings up top on like the top rope section of that part of the cage and there's just like <clears throat> there's so many different great moments you start with Ro- like th- like the three single stars with Roderick Adam Cole and Eric Young being in the ring against each other to start and it just they they did they did tell a phenomenal story uh, a lot of amazing moments in that match of course uh Adam Cole and the undisputed era picking up the win uh, which was shocking. It was actually, that was a shocking finish to that match because you didn't really know how it was going to end up, uh, but well executed. It it makes me excited for other gimmicky matches. Will we get a World War Three? Who knows? I severely doubt that. Yeah, that was like the biggest shit show WCW ever came up with. It's Dude, like, it's so the difficult. Royal Rumble has got 30 guys? <clears throat> Fuck you, we got 60 guys. We're gonna, and one of them is L Dandy. And one of them is the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I hated it because, like, how they would show it to you, they would show, like, the split screen with, like, tiny little screens, and you can't see what the hell's going on. Oh, not at all. It was horrible. Horrible. Imagine being the announcers, like, uh, which one? Do, uh, 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 and Luger. Luger over there in the corner. And, oh, uh, actually, it looks like Luger's been eliminated. He, he might have been eliminated uh, five minutes ago. <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> El Dandy, El Dandy with the win. What is going on here? No, wait, never mind. We still have guys in the other rings. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, there's that one. Uh, next on the list for match of the year. <laughs> All right, so if L is, like, the, does that mean his name is the Dandy? <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> I think we got the episode title. <laughs> the Dandy. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why you called him the dead. <laughs> oh, <it's- laughs> I'm still sick, guys. I'm sorry. If you listen to Journey to Comics, uh, I tried my hardest not to cough, and my cough got so much worse. And it's like I have like this barking cough, and now it's like today is like, oh man, I feel I, I kind of feel better with my cough, and then I start laughing so much, and I just can't do anything but cough. Oh damn. Whew. Okay, I'm alive. I've survived here, folks. Uh, oh, man, oh, I need a drink. Away from the dandy. Back to the hordes. Away from the dandy. Hmm. <laughs> 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 it's Nate just keeps cracking me up because every time he's like, "Okay, I got this," it's, and then he just, it just the dandy keeps creeping back into his head. <laughs> he can't. I'm envisioning even. typing it into Podbean and saying what the episode title is, and I'm gonna lose my shit and laugh really hard. <laughs> so I was just laughing now. Okay, back to it. Ugh. Shane <laughs> versus AJ Styles WrestleMania 33. Oh. <sighs> There are so many moments in this match. This is such a physical match, and it's not only physical, it's so personal. It's a personal match. AJ feels screwed over by Shane. 
And there are, I mean, there's a, a Uma Plata moment that's like, uh, I think Shane has AJ in the Uma Plata. AJ reverses it into a pin. One, two. Shane reverses it into another pin. One, two. They come out of it. Later, there's like a Pele kick that ends up landing on the uh, ref. The ref goes down. Another Pele kick on Shane. There's uh, a couple big bumps one time through the announce table. AJ moves, and Shane goes through it. Uh, there's a, oh, my God, there's a moment where Shane does this huge back body drop to AJ, and he, like, floated in air before he flipped. It was like a stunt in a movie. Overall, I thought this match was just very well done, phenomenally told. There's a little haha. ha Ah. Uh, this match was the opener of WrestleMania this year. And what was awesome about it is that, it, is that it had a nice, cool build to it. It didn't come out swinging. It, it, it didn't come out flying all over the place. It slowly got there. And this match, I don't want to say this because it, I don't want it to sound like I'm, like, dogging it, but it was better than it had any, any like, meaning to be. You know, like, it was way better than it had ever right any right to be because Shane is not – like the best wrestler anywhere, but again, you have AJ Styles. There, and there's a common th- there, here's, here's, there's there's a theme here. When he's out there, you're gonna get something great, whether it's the gre- best match on the card or something memorable. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like this is the best match on the card. These two guys brought it, and <laughs> this was also the beginning of his face turn. Absolutely, and and changing the guard of the character with AJ Styles. And taking him away from the heel, which he did great at. You know, here's the thing is that AJ Styles, here's a guy that 10 years ago, great worker, but he was a little one-dimensional with his character. And now here we are all these years later, and you can, all right, we want you to be heel. Okay, now we want you to be face. He can do anything, man. Yeah, and he can. He is an all-star. He is a megastar. As advertised, phenomenal. Exactly, dude. And this match was absolutely amazing. I remember, you know, that weekend for us, a uh, big, long weekend, we had the LaFiCon, and I got home, and the Battle Royal was going on, so the ma- so the match hadn't started yet, thankfully, and I remember just, I, um, I'm home, and I'm waiting for food to show up, and I'm, like, still kind of coming down from the busy weekend, trying to relax, and this match, is it's, it's, like, it started, and it didn't have me, and then it slowly, it, as I said, the build and it built, and it built. And by the end of that match, it was amazing. I loved it. You got to think that uh, Shane did the uh, corner-to-corner with the garbage Mm -hmm. can. Uh, AJ wins with a phenomenal forearm at the end of the night. Uh, Just, yeah, very, very, very good match here. Now, I put this on last minute, but the Lesnar-Joe match at Great Balls of Fire, we already talked about it a little bit, was really great because... Joe was the aggressor for 97.5% of the match. And there was just a little blimp of this Lesnar that's still a monster. And it, and, and it does tell an interesting story because it's like Joe did everything. He literally took him to the limit, hit him with all kinds of moves, threw him into the tables, threw him into the corner, you know, hit him with all these different moves. And Lesnar then just, boom, hits him with the pop-up F5 match over. And it just it does tell a good story. Is it the best match on the match of the year contenders? No, but it's good. Brandon, what do you think? You know, uh, I enjoyed the match when I saw it for sure. But if you're gonna like ask me out of these four matches, which one do I pick? Yes, sir. I'm going for Cena Styles Rumble. We're gonna have to use the randomizer because I'm going Styles Shane McMahon. All right, for WrestleMania so Thirty Three. We are going to go rumble. We're going to type that. I'm going to ask Brando a question while he's doing this, though. What's that? So, Brando, we talk about the common thread that AJ Styles is the phenomenal one. He could work with anybody. Does that mean he could have a five-star match with the dandy? (laughs) The dandy? Well, I have no doubt. Oh, that's great. Uh. Now, Now, just imagine, just imagine, like... If AJ Styles versus Okada versus Omega in Japan, how many stars that gets? 
10. It gets all of the stars. That is a dandy of a score. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. All right, so here we go. Are you ready? Three, two, one. The random picker has chosen the Mania match. AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon to be the match of the year for Journey to Wrestling. Wow. Okay. Both both are both, both are worthy of the title and both AJ Styles. Hey man. There you go with the whole uh with the whole theme of same thing. So now, you know what? We're going to go to tag team of the year cuz I f- I feel like we can have some pretty cool conversations here. My pick, my first pick here uh, was the bar. And that's Cesaro and Sheamus and it, it, the reason why it's significant that I pick them is because I was so anti them teaming up to begin with. I, I hated the end of their best of seven. I hated the fact that they were teaming up. I th- I thought this is this is derailing Cesaro in an era where he could really shine as a single star. But instead, what we we got what I consider to be like a Hollywood blonde situation, where you had stunning Steve Austin and you had flying Brian Pillman, were put together as a tag team. Why? They don't know. Uh, their their purpose was never to get over. It was never to become the big, the best or the biggest tag team on the roster. Their role was to put other people over. And what we have here is a is a team that have truly become a team. You know the blondes. Uh, they ended up getting their own look, their own style. You know their own little catchphrases, their own little monikers, the whole highlight. You know the you know the like like the film and the reel. And then now with the bar, they have the matching outfits and the and the and the uh, the kilts, and then and they they have their own little like hand symbols. They do like the fusion ha thing, and they and they have their own like their own gimmick about them. And the only thing that I don't like is that they don't have the bar music. They don't have like they don't have like a like they do the whole Cesaro thing first, and it works, I guess. But then they just have Sheamus's music at the end, with, and I feel like they should really embrace it and do something where and instead of Sheamus walking out, <laughs> and then the Sheamus thing, and then they're like that. I think the whole thing should come up when they're both like that on the stage, almost like Jer- like the Jericho thing, and then have it go around anyway. But uh, they have really stepped up. They become, in my opinion, the best team in the entire company. Ooh, that's arguable. On the mic, on the mic, in the ring, their their work, they are. What's awesome here is that I really feel like both of these guys, they're not looking at this as a thing that oh, I'm just going to do this for a while until I have my next singles push. They're doing this to become the team right now, and they're like, well, you know what? They put us here, then let's run with it and let's make it great. Because now they're gonna now, in my opinion, they outshine almost everybody. Almost everybody, as far as terms of work rate and 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 in terms of like sheer sellability, as as far as like marketability, like when you're looking at a pay per view card and you see the bar in a tag team title match, you know it's going to be a great match. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but then my other pick is also the Usos, and I feel like they've really come a long way in their heel persona. And they've really lit a fire under their butts and have tried to come up with something new for themselves. And I like their talk and smack thing coming out to the ring. And they're just they're you know they're doing something new and different. And that, you know, to me, that says a lot. Okay, so the Usos, <clears throat> I want to talk about the Usos, because the bar, it's pretty self explanatory. You did an amazing job of pretty much <laughs> uh saying exactly my thoughts and opinions of the bar. Phenomenal team, you know, they weren't necessarily supposed to work out so well together, but they're doing great things. I think that they are a premier tag team that has definitely created a, a new uh, path for themselves. When this team eventually at some point breaks up and they go about their own business, they're mega stars coming out of this thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, of course, be, because at, at that point, it will have helped both of them, you know? Exactly, but then back to the Usos, I think if we're just debating and discussing here, the Usos have, in my opinion, way better mic skills, and their and their work rate is top-notch just like the bar. 
Uh, recently, the Usos did the 12 Days of Christmas. Day one, locked down. Day two, locked down. Day three, locked down. And so on and so on and so on. Because they're not going to lose the tag titles. And they didn't at Clash. They are really, I mean, we're at a point, Brando, where we're in dangerous territory again. Because there's a lot of great things happening. There's a lot of great teams. But I feel like I want to see the Usos and the Bar have a feud, a long-term feud. And we're not getting that right now. We have to wait for a possible, like, superstar shakeup. And then, of course, that always leads to fumbling and breaking up a team for some stupid-ass reason sometimes. Well, they wrestled at Survivor Series, and it was a great match. It was a phenomenal match. It was one of the best on the card. And that's why I want more. I want more. More, more, more. That's what I want is more. So, uh... What do we got next for the tag team of the year? I put Brizongo not necessarily because they are the greatest wrestling tag team, but they have done an amazing job elevating their characters and elevating their story to make them not only popular, but relevant and something that people are anticipating to see. The Fashion Files is really a cool thing because they are parodying other things and telling their own weird, wacky narrative that really has no end or no point. It's like week to week they just go, what do we do next? Okay, let's do this. you know. And then it's given the ascension room to grow on their character. This is character growth and development. You don't always have to do that in the ring. You can do it backstage. I do like Breezango. Obviously, if we're talking tag teams of the year, how can we not discuss the Hardys? They returned. They won the tag titles. Of course, Jeff is now injured. We've got a woken Matt Hardy, but for a short glimmering moment, the Hardys were the rulers of the tag team world of the WWE. You know, and and that's why maybe I wouldn't pick them. Is that like they kind of got derailed a little bit? True. Um, so I feel like the like they didn't have as good of a year as they could have had. Uh, but in that wake, uh, especially on the Raw side, it let the bar really shine through. And of course, they had that big feud with uh, with Ambrose and Rollins, who all on their right, they're, you know, like they're a better team than I ever thought they would be, uh, and like in the ring as well. Yeah, Ambrose and Rollins could easily be on this list for tag team of the year, but uh, you know, I don't know. But Brando, what are you thinking on this? Who are you putting at the forefront here? I think it's no question it's the bar. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna agree. I, I do really enjoy the bar. They've worked really hard. They've had what three ti- three times they've been tag champs, two. Uh, they see they just won it back and then then they just lost it uh, on Christmas Raw to to Rollins and uh, up now. I want to say they've had three because weren't they the champions? Were they the champions coming in to to, to Mania or yes, no? Yes, they were. And so they lost it and then they beat the Hardys and got it back. Correct. And then, yeah, that's right, because the Bullet Club or Gallows and Anderson, they're the champions coming out of Rumble. So so do they, were Gallows and Anderson the, the champions going into Mania? No, I don't think so. Uh, and I was right. It is three three times that they have been tag champs together. I'm on the I'm on the classic Wikipedia here, and it says WWE <laughs> Raw Tag Team Champs three times. So they've had three reigns, which is pretty great. Yeah, I'll, I'm looking up the uh, the history of of the belts. Wait, so the Raw Tag Team Titles share the same lineage with the WWE Tag Team Titles that were created on SmackDown in '02. Wow, that's really confusing, but okay. <laughs> I yeah, I am confused as well. I need to start because because they they retired those titles in 2011 when they got merged. Man, this is confusing. Why can't they just have like like I I really don't understand why the the original world tag team titles that those are the ones that goes back to like to like the seventies, and then they don't refer to those anymore. So then that, now they 
refer to the new ones. WWE Raw. So I'm trying to find a dang a list of champions or because normally you can find that on here. The current champions are Seth Rollins, Jason Jordan. They just beat the bar. Who beat the Hardys? Well, the bar beat Rollins and Ambrose. That's right. Reigns. Let's see here. Maybe I'm missing something. List. I I I found the link. I got it, guys. Yay Woo. for me. Yay for me. All right. So we're all the way back at the beginning. We're gonna. We're. I I just saw Eminem. So I'm like a little far back yet. <laughs> Here's 2015. All right, guys. This lingering question. All right, so Cesaro and Sheamus won their f first World Tag Team titles by defeating the New Day in December um, at Roblox End of the Line, and that was when they finally ended New Day's classic reign uh, of being the W. W E Tag Team Champ. Anyway, at the Royal Rumble, they lost to Gallows and Anderson. Gallows and Anderson went into Mania as champions, defending against Cesaro, Sheamus, Big Cass, and Enzo Amore, and then of course the Hardys. And then they ended up defeating the Hardys in June at Extreme Rules, and held them until SummerSlam when they got beat by Ambrose and Rollins. Won them back at the Manchester Raw, which is uh, early November, and then held them until Christmas. So, yeah, the bar, best tag team, according to JIW. I think our awards are valid. I think so, too. Um, I think we have a, a good run of things going on here. So we only have a few left on the docket. We are going to go ahead, and we're going to go with... Let's go with the Lifetime Achievement Award. All right, Brando, you want to take it away? Now, what we decided to do, this is a new one. This is Lifetime Achievement. And so this is almost going to kind of like be like this show's random highlight where we're going to highlight somebody who really, whose career, you know, they've really had a big storied career. And it doesn't really, I mean, it could def definitely be anybody. But when Nate suggested it, and I'm like thinking, well, do, do we have nominees? I mean, no other award show. That's not how it works. They usually just pick somebody. So my initial thought, and and this is coming off of me watching Starcade '93. So Nate, I don't know if you've ever watched that show. Nope. Give it a go. We'll do. Really give that show a go. I got nothing going on. I'll do it. Um, but there was a title match: two out of three falls for the United States Heavyweight Title. Champion, the natural Dustin Rhodes, defending against stunning Steve Austin. Wow! And I watched that, and I watched that match. Great match, and it just reminded me, it was like Dustin Rhodes, aka Gold Dust, never really got, you know, his. I mean, he has a great storied career, but he never really got to that like main event level, you know. He never really ascended to that top tier, and maybe it was the fact that he had to compete right after his dad's career. He had he had to live up to that name. I feel like Dustin's a great worker, but I definitely wanted to highlight him here because think about when Dustin started, like what late eighties, early nineties, and he, you know, he was well. They call him the natural, natural as can be. They call him the natural. It comes naturally. He had the most awful ring music that's so catchy. And he had to live up to being the son of Dusty Rhodes. May I call him Dream, baby? Yeah, you know, he he didn't have the character. He had the ring work. I thought his ring work was really solid. And he had the height, man. He had the look. He had everything that he really needed to be a big star, but he was just never in the right place at the right time. And then, of course... He went to the WWF a couple of times, and he went to the WWF in the early 90s, and he tagged with his dad against Ted DiBiase and all that kind of stuff, and he, and he kind of bounced back and forth, but it wasn't until he came back in 95 and became Gold Dust that he really let himself escape 
the role of Dustin Rhodes and become something completely different, completely off the wall. And he, 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 he created a character that for the time was just so controversial. He was a controversial character and different and pushed the boundaries. And you look at his career and, you know, he has a lot of really cool matches to talk about. Uh, can't not mention WrestleMania 12 versus Roddy. That's just a, a fun, different kind of, was that a street fight? Chicago street fight or something? That was a Hollywood backlot brawl. Thank you. Hollywood backlot brawl. Uh you know, he won uh, a couple different titles. If I remember correctly, Goldust has won the Intercontinental title. He won a couple tag titles with Booker T. Uh, didn't he win a tag title once with his brother? Didn't they, Goldust yes. and Stardust, win titles for a short time there? Uh, so yeah, he, and, and, it, and it was before Stardust. Uh, that's right. It was when he was still Cody Rhodes. But one, uh, one of the things, one of the matches that I wanted to talk about here, and of course he's had... He had the multiple different variations of Gold Dust. You know, like he had the original, and then he split from Marlena, and then he went with Luna Vachon, and he went really whacked out and crazy, wearing all kinds. I, I remember when he was the New Year's baby, where he was out there wearing nothing but a diaper. Wow. Um, doing all kinds of stuff, dude. He was really, really out there, and, and especially during that era of wrestling, really had no fear. You know, let's go do it, man. Let's... Let's uh, let's really put the balls against the wall. But when he came back, it was I want to say when the authority first kind of started, and they fired Cody, and he came back to stand up for his brother, and he main evented Raw against in a, in, like, in, a, in a WWE title match against Randy Orton. I remember that. And that match is off the fucking hook. That match is awesome, and it was one of the first times that he'd wrestled in a long time. Now, if you followed his career, you'll know that he left the WWF or WWE. He went to TNA, and he did this whole Black Rain gimmick where he was just completely different. He was a bigger dude. He, you know, he packed on the weight, but when he came back, he was in much better shape. You know, he's really, he's, he's really championed DDP yoga for getting himself in shape and getting his body back in shape, and he's still wrestling on the active roster today um, at an age where... A lot of people have already packed it up and gone home. He's still out there and he's still entertaining and he's still, he's not main event star. No, he's not universal WWE champion, but he's still out there having fun and helping these younger guys. And you need guys like this on the roster to help the younger guys Absolutely. because, you know, Dustin, a guy that harkens back to the old era, old, old era, he really helps out with that. But that match with Randy, I remember watching that live going, I want him to win. Damn it. I'm like, I'm like this ain't gonna happen. He's never gonna win, but he's just putting it all out there, man. And he's he's showing not only like you know uh, Vince or H or any whoever's in who who's ever in like charge backstage. I'm gonna make it to where you don't regret putting me in the main event of, of Raw here. Yeah, like if you're gonna and give I'm, me this moment, God damn it, I'm gonna make it my own. Exactly. He went out there and he took it and. It was an awesome match, and it ended, I mean, obviously with Randy getting the win. But, man, you were just on the edge of your seat going, because you never know. Sometimes they, 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 get, all, they get all wonky. They give Jinder Mahal a belt. Um, they, they, they imagine if that one night, and, and they could have like just had it, let him hold it for a week and have him reverse it or do something the next week. Goldust wins the WWE title. What? Mind-blowing. And it it could have happened, and it almost did, and it was a great match. But I just felt like for his career, for everything that he did as Goldust, as Dustin Rhodes, um, he doesn't get the love that he deserves. And for lifetime achievement, I felt like it's a perfect guy in a perfect place in a perfect time of his career for, for you to have a suggested this award. He was the first name that came to my mind. I love it. I love that we are awarding our first lifetime achievement award to Mr. Dustin Rhodes Gold Dust. Uh, where do you want to go from here, Brando? Well, we only have a few more left here um, as our group chat is con is continuing to have activity and, and like distracting me as I'm trying to look at our awards and our chat here. 
We have, I think we have two more left. We have show of the year. No, no, we have three. Show of the year, superstar of the year. So let's go ahead and hit with our second annual Baron Corbin Award. Yeah. Now, of course, last year was the first annual, and the inaugural winner of the Baron Corbin Award was its namesake, Baron Corbin. Had to be. So what does this award, what does this award mean? And if you listen to the first season of Journey to Wrestling, you'll hear our distaste for Baron Corbin very unanimously. All three of us at the, at the time hated him, could not stand this this guy. And so when we were making our awards, it was almost a joke award. But then it has then kind of turned into the most laughable, the most face slapping, face palming, uh, worst thing, whether it's wrestler, whether it's anything. Cringeworthy. And cringeworthy, yes, exactly. Without calling it the worst of whatever. So, first nominee for Barry Corbin Award for 2017, Jason Jordan. Yeah, uh, I don't think that Jason Jordan is a victim of his own doing in this award. <laughs> I think that he's a victim of circumstance, and they tried to put him on Raw to swim with the big boys a little too early. And they jumped mm -hmm. the shark on that a little too early. And even with what happened last night and him and Rollins winning the titles, it still feels a little too early, you know. So he's not over, man. He's just he's like he dude, he's least he's less over than Roman Reigns. You know what I want to compare and, him to? Hmm. It's the voice. It's his voice because it's the Bobby Lashley thing. I would never believe Bobby <laughs> Lashley is a strong competitor because he's no offense, he's got such a weak ass voice. And I think the same is what is bugging me about Jason Jordan. He's just like, no, Roman Reigns, I'm going to fight Braun Strowman next, and then I'm going to fight you. It reminds me of the uh, Suburban Commando thing. Please tell me you've seen that movie with Hulk Hogan. Oh, yes, absolutely. With The Undertaker? Oh. As, as like the bounty hunter? What does he say? He's, there's a... It's, it, the Undertaker finally speaks in that movie, and he has this little kid voice and goes, you're a dead man, Ramsey. Yeah, you're a, you're a <laughs> dead man, Ramsey. <laughs> He's his little kid voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's really, I think, what it is with, with uh, Jason Jordan that I have such distaste for him is, uh, you know, like, go smoke 50 packs of cigarettes or something, bro, and deepen your fucking voice, like... I just I don't know I yeah. I need a little I need because he's I can't take him seriously even when he's angry he's like a little kid having a tantrum. Uh, next I don't oh and hold on I I I didn't like the storyline where he's like you know Kurt Angle's like he's my kid and it is cool I mean it I I guess so I, I don't really have much to like like congrats I guess and then they're like. No, now now that he is not Jordan Jason Engel <laughs> he's still Jason Jordan. I I don't I don't know what I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're going with him. Well, can I just say Jason Engel is a shitty name, so please don't change it from Jason Jordan. At least that has some uh you know, like the Peter Parker thing going on with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just man. I I don't buy it when he talks. It he's reciting lines. Yes, exactly. It's so obvious, and so I don't buy it because I don't think he buys it. And I and I, I think he's trying hard, but he's not in it. He's not he's not living it. Um, next up, Impact Wrestling slash GFW slash TNA slash I don't know what they're called anymore. The Owl um, Anthem. So. Dude, well, what a fall for this company. I don't like to see any company fail. But I want them to just close up shop and let these guys go work somewhere else. Let, let somebody else build up this company because, like, they don't, in my opinion, where they're at right now, they don't deserve to own the rights to the old TNA footage. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, in fact, there were rumors that they were going to sell it. A while back, like, yeah, we're just going to sell the old TNA footage. And it's, I don't know what they're doing. I don't, I don't get it. Of course, there was that whole almost year-long battle with them and Matt Hardy over the rights of the broken character where they wouldn't give it to him. 
and then they just gave up. And now they have all these big stars that are leaving because they can't afford to pay them. They're downsizing the company. A lot of big time backstage guys are gone. You know, they just changed oh. how their contracts work too. Did you hear about this because of the Hardys thing? Yes, yes. Like in, where like they in future where now they will the re- allow everyone to own their own character rights so they don't have to deal with this ever again. And it's messed up because all you had to do was work with them from the get go and not be so greedy. Correct. And they would have saved a fuck ton of money and time. You know and, and now and now Impact Wrestling they, they they've moved up shop to Canada. I don't see why Jeremy Borash even wants to be the voice of this damn thing anymore. It just, did, did you notice? Okay, so they had the new Global Force Wrestling belts made, which were just like newer versions of the current existing Global Force belts. And now they, since they didn't finalize the deal with the merger of Global Force with Jeff Jarrett before they kicked him out, they just had to put this like medallion car sticker plate on top of the belts where it says Global Force Wrestling. Okay, I haven't seen that, so I need to Dude, see that. Dude, the new, yeah, the new Impact Wrestling belts. It is basically the it, it is the worst looking thing you'll ever see because it because it's Global Force. It is GFW, and I mean, me being a big belt mark and being a part of like, you know, like newer uh, or you know, or like the like the belt talk community online. Dude, it's awful. So awful. And I'm trying to find the, uh, if, if I just search GFW, maybe it'll pop up. Yeah, because the only thing I have right. is an old looking impact belt. But I have not seen this medallion. By the way, I heard a rumor that the, uh, that there is definitely a new U.S. title coming, by the way. I heard a rumor as well. Not sure if I buy into that, but um, okay. So okay, so this is a bad picture, Nate. Sure, that's All right. okay. All right, so that is the that was the new Global Force belt that was created. Yep, I can see it. All right, so then. Wow, they just slapped a literal thing over it. And it and and since they they had to do it in a way that covered the whole logo, it's even like kind of like off center. Oh my gosh. I feel like TNA wrestling's like legacy is going to be what not to do when you have a company. You know, they had everything that they could ever want to try and become the number two company they could then and, and if they would have been smarter and long term that they could have eventually became the number one company brando maybe but like that's a long-term game because i think they were trying to up start it and like let, let let's become number one now and uh, sooner than later other than just like let's play the slow game let's be number two let's be the the alternative company that people want to go see other than wwe um and that's why to me they're the most cringeworthy thing of this year it's sad. It's more sad than what's happening with Jason Jordan, in my opinion. Um, Fair enough. It's awful. It's awful. Because Jason Jordan at least can be redeemed at this point. Truth. That is the truth. Next on the list, Brando. She's cringeworthy because I did not realize that, you know, in her quote-unquote storied career, she's like the most undercarded woman's wrestler in the history of women's wrestling and she's the worst on the promos and I don't mean to be awful but Alicia Fox just hang it up I don't know who she knows in the company that just like keeps her around but she cut a promo because we didn't we haven't even talked about this there's the mixed match thing that happened you know about this they're doing it's, it's not ha- it hasn't happened yet it's going the to happen. announcement happened though and yeah, the mixed max challenge and they had uh you know Nia Jax picked her tag partner as Braun you know uh, and she hopes that that's going to happen so she's like championing that to happen or whatever and they cut a little thing but then they like they were like okay well Alicia Fox is going to say who she picks and i watched the promo and she didn't say who she picks she just made a lot of really scary fucking weird faces at the camera that made me go why is she in wrestling i don't i genuinely don't understand there's no part of her that's believable. 
Do you remember when we first, uh, it was right after we first started the show, it was like the first summer, and we were like really anti Eva Marie. Uh, yeah. And, and until we saw her like in barely nothing clothing and like with like different color hair, we're like, you know, she's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, in fact, I think I made a joke about like something that, like where I completely reversed my 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 thought on that. I don't think I'm gonna reverse my thought here, even if I saw what even if that's the case. Because I, I just yeah, I I I feel nothing towards Alicia Fox, and the fact that they gave her the lead for Survivor Series to be the team captain. It was just weird. It was. I don't really feel like she's on the same level as some of the other women, you know, and no offense to her. Not even close. And that, that and that's one thing I was saying is like you've got the women's revolution that's come up and they're all upper echelon talent who work and put the work in and they are developed characters. And then you have Alicia Fox from the Divas era who is still trapped in the Divas era like it never left. She thinks she's challenging for the Divas title and it's we're not there anymore. So to me that's one thing that's very cringe worthy for for her and for a possible award. Lastly, for our Baron Corbin of the Year award, it's not Baron Corbin, Brando. Spoiler alert: We actually did not nominate him. He he did just enough to avoid disaster, I guess, as it were. Uh, but lastly, is the unwinnable 153 loss Kurt Hawkins. I think it's 100. It's it's up there. It's 100 and something. It's a high ass number. Because he loses at every house show, every Raw, and not SmackDown, I don't think, because he's on Raw. But he loses a lot. Big time loser. Losing big time. I don't have anything to say about Kurt Hawkins. I really don't. Because I really don't. He's a dude that when they brought him back, I don't know why they brought him back. It's like at first I thought they were going to do something with him, and then he just became this job guy. Do you know? I think he wants his legacy to be the this modern era's Brooklyn Brawler. You know, <laughs> like he had an he had an okay run in the ruthless aggression era and beyond, and in the you know my time is now John Cena era. He's okay. Wow, as of December second, Kurt Hawkins has lost one hundred and forty matches since Dang, returning. Dude, you were close. I were not. I was not far off. That's a uh, yeah. I thought you were about to say, I were not close. <laughs> I were not close. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, because this is, uh, wow, yeah, he's just losing, 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 losing. <laughs> but uh, he is actually championing losing. Like He's hyping being a loser. It's kind of crazy and interesting. It makes him different. Yeah. Everybody else wants to be a winner in a world full of wannabe winners. Why not be the only loser? <laughs> it, yeah, why be a wannabe winner when you could be a real loser? <laughs> oh, the dandy, All the right. wannabe winners, and the real losers. So here we are. Here we are. We are down to it. We are down to it. So we got to pick. My, my vote for... And I, and I think I made it up when I said it. I think it's going to be Impact Wrestling is the winner of the Baron Corbin Award for this year. You know, after hearing you championing it, I'm going to second that vote. And a the first time a WWE award has gone to a non-WWE company or personality, welcome. They're the only ones that have been nominated that aren't with the WWE, which is... You know what? I, I, we, we, I, when I said it, like... The last episode, when we talked about it and we said something about Jason Jordan, I'm like, well, he's the winner, no doubt. It wasn't until I'm like, well, then who am I going to nominate this year for being the most cringeworthy or whatever? And that, first off, I said Jason Jordan. And the second, I'm like, fuck Impact Wrestling, dude. <laughs> fuck Impact Wrestling. <laughs> fuck Impact Wrestling. All right, so we only, we only got two more here. And uh, we have show of the year. We only have three nominees but we could probably easily put another one on there if if we want to tack one on. That's up to you, Nate, because I gave two, and then uh, I'm gonna add you can give War Games. Are you? Yeah. All right. Well, then one of them is War Games. NXT War Games take over. Uh, we already kind of talked about it earlier. It had some good matches. It had Cassius Ono and one stumpy looking dude. I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Lars something. Yeah, Ringo Lars. Um, <laughs> and then we had. Uh, 
the, the the Velveteen Dream and Alistair Black. Great match. We had, we had the women's title match. We had uh, Drew McIntyre. Dude, he was so close to being uh, um, my, my nominee for being like a uh, debut or, or, or like a, a return. Or, you know, he, he's also right up, right up there with most improved. Uh, Truth. I feel like he he's a... Uh, he is an honorable mention for both of those. Uh, uh, I really am so saddened by the fact that he got hurt when he did because I really feel like I feel like Drew McIntyre, if he can come back and be just as good as he was, he could be like well on his way to becoming the like that chosen one that they kind of said he was going to be. I agree with you, hundred um, percent. But here, but here we are. So we so we already said war games because it also had the war games match. WrestleMania thirty three. It's a great show. I, you know, looking back on this, there's a lot of great stuff on this show, and only only one or two like misses. And if we and if we had we had a if if we had a worst match of the year category, uh, that worst match would probably go to Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt because this match that happened at WrestleMania it was it, it was worse than the House of Horrors. It was just I mean, it was a stinker, man. It made no and sense. We, and when you, and, and when you well, I mean, they they did the whole projecting thing, and when you think about the kind of match that these two guys could have, you know, both these guys are just and I I, I like the storyline of Randy being in the Wyatt family, and getting close to him, and then this kind of dissolving of of the relationship. I thought it was a really good angle and match, uh, you know, setup, but it just failed. But then you had the Hardys return. You had the Style Shane match. You had hey. Even the Goldberg Lesnar match was the best five minute match you'll ever freaking see. Yep. You know, and then you had um oh no, um you had the was that the one that was the triple threat? Was that was that a triple threat for the women's? No, 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 because that was the Bailey. She came out as champ, and uh, she wrestled against uh, a few other. Was that Nia Jax, Sasha, and Charlotte? Yeah, didn't Naomi come back too? Because it was her hometown, and she won. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, uh, it was. Uh, that was the Alexa Bliss uh, uh, SmackDown title. Yes, one. it was my fault. That's my fault. And then you had the uh, the the Jericho Owens match, which is pretty good. Not as good as it could have been, but pretty good. I I, I kind of felt like their their follow up match was a little bit better. Taker Roman. And then you had Taker Roman, which. That match, I've seen that match in a lot of worst matches of the year. It's not a bad match. No, it's worse because people don't like the finish. I know they don't, but I felt like Taker did so much and gave so much to make that match mean something and to make Roman mean something. Yeah, absolutely. Any other era, Roman would be a universally loved top guy. Almost. And I... Really feel like Roman gets shit on more than what he needs to be. Yes, you get kind of tired of seeing him all the time, but he but he's their championed guy. He's like he he's not the best on the mic, but he doesn't have to be all the time. But goddamn, dude, he can go. Yeah, and I and I feel like the match with Taker proved it that he could go in there against Undertaker last match on the uh, of the night, prove himself, and that he can have a damn good match. Not the best match of the night, but. Overall, as a whole package, it's one of the, like, considering that WrestleMania 32 was such a stinker of a, of a WrestleMania, kind of, where it just, man, it just, all the, all, like, you get all the injuries on that one. Oh, the, um, the mixed tag, the Miz and Maurice and Cena and, and Bella, that was a good match. That was a, that was a good match. match. I love the crowd reaction, the, the, the vibe for that match is awesome. Um, Can't forget because it got left off of the DVD. Let's not forget the Austin Aries Neville match. Yeah, the cruiserweight title. Damn good. That match. was another good one. Um, and Battle Royal was missable. You don't need to see it. I don't even remember. Oh, fucking Gronk helped uh, Mojo win. Yep. So yeah, I mean, so Mania was has has been nominated. The other one was was Royal Rumble seventeen. You know, the when the first pay per view of the year. And of course that housed the Royal Rumble match was a pretty damn good Royal Rumble. Kind of shocking that that Ro- that not Rome, I'm sorry, uh, that Randy Orton wins, but that avoids the the universal boo when Roman comes out at number thirty after have already having the match 
People are like, who's it going to be? Is it going to be? I, I don't know. Who could it be? Dana. 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 <laughs> oh. And then just everybody in the room was like, oh, no, he's going to win. God damn it. And then he didn't. Thankfully. But he did eliminate The Undertaker, and that set that, you know, that, set that match up. The, but even Goldberg and Lesnar, they went at it a little bit. And then, uh, of course, you had the Cena versus Styles match, you, and you had some other matches that night that were really good. So I felt like the overall the night, dude, is really good, a, really, a really good card. And then you nominated Great Balls of Fire from this past year, which that had, they, had that ambulance match, that ball, that knockout dragout ambulance match, and, of course, the Joe v. Um, Lesnar match. And I'm having a hard time remembering any, any of the other matches I'm from that I'm going to pull it up, Brando. I just looked at it, and I had it up, and then I fucking closed my phone because my brain doesn't work sometimes. Well, way to go, buddy. Great Balls of Fire, WWE. WWE. Coming up now. Let's see here. Are the matches from Great Balls of Fire? Just to refresh your memory, the results are as follows: uh, Neville defeated Akira Tozawa. It was a pre-show match for the cruiserweight title. Bray defeats Seth. Singles match: Big Cass defeats Endo Enzo. There was the payoff to the <laughs> the Endo Amore. Endo Amore. <laughs> the Endo their relationship. <laughs> yes. Uh, you had Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Hardys in the Iron Man tag match. Oh yes, that match was awesome. Yes, it was. It yes, had a weird. Seemed like they fucked up the finish. Finish. Yeah. Oh man, like that, they, that was a great match. They were supposed to go into overtime, but then they didn't. So, oops. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, great match. Great match. Sasha, Sasha defeats. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my words weren't coming out there. Sasha defeats Alexa by countout, so she doesn't get the women's title. Uh. The Miz defeats Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Champ. Oh, oh, it was for the title, but uh, Miz walked in as champ. Like we said, ambulance match, Braun versus Roman. The second to last match of the night. Do you remember? This is the barn burner. I can't believe this didn't go for match of the year. It was Heath Slater versus Kurt Hawkins. <laughs> in a two-minute squat. And then of course it was Samoa Joe versus Lesnar in the in the in the main event. What's your pick out of these four, man? What's your pick? You no, know, I think I have to go really with WrestleMania 33. It was a fucking great bitchin' card. One of the best manias we've had in the past like three or four years, honestly. Uh, so it was up there, dude. I really enjoyed you know 30, 31. <laughs> I didn't enjoy 32. 33 was good, and I felt like 33 was almost a kind of return to form after the kind of a dud that was 32. Correct. So, you know, uh, all hoping that 30, you know, 34 is going to be right up there. And hopefully, you know, now that now that we hopefully won't be too busy that weekend, maybe we can get together th uh, that weekend and watch it again. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm right there with you. WrestleMania 33 wins show of the year for JIW. And then last but not least, Superstar of the Year. Now, last year we did male superstar, female superstar. We just kind of combined them this year and, uh, you know, treating them all the same. But every single person on this list deserves to win. I agree. Um, some people on this list have already been named by other publications. Really? Yes. Uh, number one, AJ Styles. Uh He's the common thread here, dude. He, we, we talked about him for matches, for, you know, so many matches of the year. Pretty much the AJ uh, Styles show for this episode. Yes. I mean, we're championing this dude, man. He, he is everything that the WWE needs. When you're having a guy like Roman who's struggling to get super over with the masses. Correct. The guy who that everybody in this company loves is AJ Styles. Now, the next guy is another one of those guys. And a, a guy that everybody who's a diehard fan is just seemingly loving right now is The Miz. Oh, man. You sent me that clip. The Miz talking and reflecting on his arguably the best promo of 2017 uh, smackdown. I feel like that's the best. I feel like that's the best promo anything since the pipe bomb. Yes, absolutely. And it was that raw emotion. It's almost like Miz had so much of this raw emotion that he didn't know what to do with it. 
And I really liked him saying that, like he didn't, he didn't think Brian was gonna walk off. He just thought Brian was gonna hit him. He goes, he goes, that's fine, best business man. I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll take a hit. I don't care. But like when he walked away, it's like for a second he didn't know what to do. He's like, uh, camera, <laughs> look, you know, look at me. And I absolutely loved him looking back on that. The Miz bringing him over to Raw. He has basically made that show must see. Absolutely, he's been off TV Ever for since, a couple weeks. Well, he has been. He, uh, he, but he, and he's been doing the movie. But they've also positioned it in a way where you know you have different people there to kind of fill the void. But having Lesnar, having Lesnar uh, be the Universal Champion, have him hardly ever be on the show. The top champion on the show has been the Miz for most of the year. Yeah, he's made the IC title extremely prestigious again, and so. You know, with him being the top guy, he's he, you know he he makes him the top heel on the on like on the program. Uh, despite whether or not Braun's a big heel, Joe's a big heel, the guy that's going to talk people into the seats that that's always been the Miz. And I've been championing the Miz all year. I said that if it were me, I wouldn't have moved him away from SmackDown. I wouldn't have made Gender World Champion. Miz would have been World Champion. Still, still, I mean. Uh, no, and, and I mean, obviously, you you could build up awesome AJ Styles match with the Miz. I mean, they've already done it, but you could do it again and build a great story out of it. Can you imagine having Miz win the world title in May of last year, um, and then having held it, held it, held it, and held it, and held it, and held it, come back around, come back around? AJ Styles wins the Royal Rumble, then WrestleMania is the Miz going in the Mania. As champion, he's gonna break. He's gonna become the longest reigning champion. He's the must see, most must see champion uh, of all time against AJ Styles, and that match is gonna be off the hook. But of course, that's not happening, and that's fine. I mean, that's it. But in the means, in the meantime, it's unfortunate that Miz is basically being that guy without having the accolade for it. Uh, having to, he he was the reason why the Shield reunited. Or we're going to reunite. It was is because of him, you know. And and you have his promos, and and he said this in that little like behind the scenes thing. Since that moment, he's like, it's changed his mindset. Where every single time he's on screen, that's his moment. And he's trying. He's going to try and make that moment mean something. He is without a shadow of the doubt one of the storybook tales of wrestling this guy from the real world claims he wants to be the guy claims he wants to be this great wrestler called the miz he's got this whole fake persona it's like a <laughs> shitty knockoff of the rock essentially he really does the work he goes through tough enough he doesn't win tough enough he you know still battles through he, he does end up on the company he at some point ends up fostering uh, a relationship and 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 showing the quote-unquote ropes to a already seasoned Daniel Bryan being the whole protege thing. And they've just kept evolving this Miz character now where, you know what? He is easily, easily the, the shining moment of this current era. As far as a legacy contender goes, it's not about the John Cena's or the Randy Orton's. It's really about the Miz, you know, while Orton and Cena were gifted all this gold, Miz has done all the work. All of it. Up next, we have Braun Strowman. And this is one of your picks, and I can't disagree. Braun has done so much in just one year. And all reality, I feel like he got the shaft at WrestleMania, getting eliminated pretty early from that Battle Royal and having not much else to do with the show. That, that after that, he's, he's really made the rest of his year Braun Strowman's year. Absolutely. And the whole feud with Roman was nothing but great. God, he flipped an ambulance. That was fucking crazy. Uh, the whole thing at TLC where, where he was in the match and just super destructive. And then, like, they, they almost had to kill him like like the shredder at, at the end of Turtles 1. <laughs> Throw him in the back of the truck or in the garbage truck. And they murdered him. They murdered a dude. Yeah. I didn't even think and about that. Like, he still didn't die, though. I know, man. He's a monster among men. But I, I really feel like this dude, 
Um, I don't know what they're going to do with him with you know for Mania this year. I really don't. Um, because I, I really feel like he's gonna if they don't put him in one of the big title matches, he's just gonna kind of be left off to the side. And I really feel like he's worth more than that. Um, Taker, my my original I, Taker. I don't know if Taker's coming back, dude. I I mean, from everything I've heard, he's done. He is D O N E. That last year was his. That was his go home. He's he's going home. He might show up or not again. He might make a special appearance. And he might be inducted. But from in all honesty, like I I, I I don't think my heart could take any more of that. No, just watching him lose to Braun, it wouldn't benefit anybody really. No, but I mean, like just like watching. Okay, so like in thirty, you saw the end of the streak. And I thought that was it. It's done. It's over. And for all intents and purposes, so did they. They thought he was done. Like, they didn't think he would be able to get in a good enough shape to go again. And then he went for a couple more years and had some good matches. He had a little and, run uh, there for a while. Yeah, dude, yeah. He came back with that whole run with Lesnar and all that. But um, then the ending of last year and the way it was framed and the way he just left his stuff in the ring and the way that, you know, Roman had his win, celebrated, and, and then left and let him kind of, like, have the final moment of the night. Like it was after midnight, and I'm just like laying there on the couch, going, "I'm so tired, physically and now emotionally. Like, just stop playing with my heartstrings, man. It's over." Mm-hmm. Uh, last up on the list, Oscar. Man, what can we say that what we already haven't said, dude? Oscar's a beast. Five hundred and thirty uh, day she, NXT champ. I know, dude. Uh, she, great, great run there in NXT, and uh, you know she's made her debut on the ro- on the main roster, and she's starting to become quite a contender here now and uh she had a hell of a year as well um but it it really sucks that they didn't get a chance to cap off her NXT run when she kind of got hurt there uh protected they her just, though in the long term it it did it really did because i really feel like it would have meant more if ember moon finally would have been the one to beat her and finally get that rub but it was cool that since they didn't do that that she still was sort of like involved with Handing her the title afterwards. Do you think they were worried about a slingshot effect with Ember Moon? Like she beats Asuka and then she's more over than Asuka? No, no. I don't think so. Because even if you beat Asuka, dude, you can't like... Dude, like everybody loses. Well, And, and, the, and, the, and the only thing is is that you've got to have more to offer than that undefeated streak. That is what hurt Goldberg back in the late 90s. Uh, he became more about the undefeated streak than his work in the ring. And then when they beat him and the magic was kind of gone, you know, I like Goldberg, but he didn't have enough left in the tank. His matches were not that engaging to help and captivate the audience. And Asuka is not that he, she can go. Oh yes. So if you got to pick Nate, who wins superstar of the year, the Miz. AJ Styles. Going to the randomizer for the final category of the night. The cat, the randomizer was also used for the first category of the night, so I love that we're, uh, you know, going full circle here, as it were. Both of these guys are well deserving of this. Um, both of them had a hell of a year. I, you know, I think about AJ Styles uh, having them, you know. Some of the best matches of the year. Rumble, Mania, Owens. Even Ginger's had great matches with him. Lesnar. You know, oh, Finn Balor. We you know, we didn't even talk about the Finn Balor match from TLC. Oh, yes. Um, great, great, great match there. And But then you have The Miz and the kind of year that he's had and how he's championed this run now where, like, the the only thing standing in his way are slightly bigger stars in the company's eyes. If he were on SmackDown, he'd be WWE champion right now. He'd have to be. He also because did something like, that uh, Paul Heyman couldn't do. What's that? Elevate Curtis Axel. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that being said, here we go. The final pick of the night goes to... AJ Styles is your new journey into wrestling superstar of the year. I don't know who won last year. Like, like was it Styles? Oh, God. 
It might have been Styles. We, but Styles wins. Uh, the randomizer has picked it. Uh, both of these guys super deserving of this. Uh, I said earlier what, that I don't know about Styles, but the Miz was named Sports Illustrated Wrestler of the Year. Wow. Um, so, I mean, he's not getting the nod from Journey into Wrestling this year due to the randomizer. He got the uh, nod, though. He did. He was in our thoughts. I th- Like I said, I think The Miz is a phenomenal talent. Uh, I don't think that he lost this category. I just feel like AJ Styles won it. God damn it, Brando. Perfectly said. Perfectly, flawlessly said. Is that it for our awards this year? I think that is it. That is all. Let's run down the list just really quick. Of course, we picked... Uh, Dustin Rhodes as our lifetime achievement award. The second of the second ever Baron Corbin award goes to Impact Wrestling slash GFW slash TNA Wrestling slash. Caca. What are they gonna be? What are they gonna be next year? Caca. Caca. Well, 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 and Al says hoot. Yeah, but they're gonna become crows and just caca. Oh, uh, okay. The most shocking moment of the year, I believe, that was Hardy's. Yeah. One that most improved goes to did. Did we pick Braun Strowman for that one? Yes, sir. See, I, I'm already forgetting who all we chose. I thought you wrote the match it down. of the. Uh, no, I didn't write them down. Uh, I was just kind of going through it. Match of the year that was Styles, AJ Styles, and Shane McMahon WrestleMania 33. Best debut and return. I want to say that we chose Shinsuke Nakamura for that one. Yes, sir. Show of the year was was WrestleMania 33. Tag team of the year was the Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro, and lastly, Superstar of the year. AJ Styles, the phenomenal one himself. Nate, thank you for coming on the show here today and uh, throwing down on some wrestling, man. It was really cool to sit back and talk to you and just kind of reflect on the year a little bit. And hopefully, we make this, you know, I mean, the second year in a row, we're going to have to do it next year now. Uh, season three, obviously, we're going to do an award show in season three and look forward to that. We're not quite done with season two, though. We're um, pretty much at the midway point of this season, though, I'm pretty sure. I think we're right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think there's 18 or 19 episodes slotted for... I have the calendar somewhere. It's not on me right this second because I'm a terrible pod father. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Brando, do you want to go ahead and send us home, my friend? I sure will, dude. Thank you guys for checking out this episode of Journey into Wrestling. What was it, Nate? Episode not, uh, 8 or 9? Eight. 8. Episode 8 here for Journey into Wrestling. Thank you guys for checking out this episode. Now, of course, we hope you enjoyed us uh, going through these categories and these end-of-year awards, which is seemingly going to be our mid-season thing going forward here as we go forward with the show. Of course, you can check out all the other great shows on the Journey into Comics Network over at journeyintocomics.com. You can also uh, you'll subscribe via your favorite podcasting service. We're on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, and Spotify. Uh, big, big news about being on Spotify now. That's a really big win for us. Of course, you can also check us out on YouTube. We are backed up, automatically uploaded to YouTube. If you just surf on YouTube, go over there, hit us a subscribe, and hit us with those no- with those notifications. You'll always get notified when a new show gets uploaded there. We're also on Facebook on Journey to Wrestling. We're on Twitter at JIW on JIC. And uh, I think that is everywhere that we are for Journey to Wrestling. You can check us out every other Wednesday right here on the Journey to Comics Network. Just subscribe via your favorite service, Nate. Thank you for joining me here today, this week. Dude, always. Um, obviously love being on Journey into Wrestling here. Did you talk about the Patreon, by the way? We did not. If you want to head over to Patreon, uh, journey to, or patreon.com forward slash Journey into Comics, dude, for a dollar you get early access to everything we do. All nine shows. Is it nine now? Ten. All ten shows? Yes, sir. Man, growing, growing, growing. You get all ten shows that we have to offer on the same RSS feed, for just a buck, you get that, and you get them early access up to a week. Whenever they're done, whenever they're, you know, some shows are kind of last minute. Other shows, dude, they're, we have shows in the bag already that are just waiting to be uploaded. You get those early, my friend. You don't have to wait for the release date. And for three bucks a month, you get exclusive bonus content that don't go up here onto the RSS feed or onto the YouTube or onto Facebook or onto Twitter. Nowhere else except the Patreon feed. That, that's just for you guys over there. If you guys want to help check us out and, and, uh, you know, help us out with the going forwards and helping supporting our cause here on the network. We really appreciate that. We and we appreciate every single one of you who have checked out this episode this week of Journey to Wrestling. With that being said, I've been Brando. I've been Nate. And we will see you in two weeks, my friend. We will see you into the new year. Let's have a great and wonderful 2018. Bro!